identify yourself? How you doing? Uh, my name is Vincent Gaynor, and I've traveled here with my lovely wife, Catherine. It's really a, it was really a hard meeting for us to attend because uh, we've never left our child before. This is the first time in her life, but we thought it was an important meeting, so we had to. This is my daughter, Sophia, Sophia Gaynor. She has SMA type 1. We've watched this disease ravage her body. It's stolen everything from her, every movement, even her smile. Too many children are lost every year to this disease. With a heavy heart, I came this morning. I got a phone call that a very close friend of Sophia's passed away. This is a patient population that is always avoided. We need something for the type 1s. This is some of the greatest preclinical data ever seen in this disease and some of the safest data as well. We've gone in hundreds of animals. You know, There are many questions with SMA that are left unanswered, but there are some answers that we do have. We know what happens if we do nothing. These children will die. And I don't know how many more funerals I can go to where the coffins are two feet long. So please take that into consideration and thank you for your time. My name is Jennifer Solana. I'm from Orange County, California. And because of SMA, my son has almost as many therapy appointments in a week as he does school days. But he doesn't have SMA. His sister does. He was three when she was diagnosed. And for the longest time, he thought that she was incapacitated because she was a baby. Now he understands differently. He understands more. He is, um, he feels, um, racked with guilt when he comes home with a cold from kindergarten and it goes through the house. He fears the death of everyone in the house. He asked me in September when he passed strep throat to me, he begged me, Mommy, please don't die. He's on, we're considering anxiety meds because he's under the care of a psychologist and a psychiatrist. This is what SMA has done to my healthy child. If there had been an opportunity for a clinical trial like this when my daughter was diagnosed, we would have jumped at it. We, we would have hoped to have prevented the loss that happened within weeks of her diagnosis. Within six weeks, she was starting to lose her swallow. By eight weeks, she needed BiPAP. By 10 weeks, she had her first pneumonia. We want more for our daughter and our son. And just not a week ago, my son said to me, Mommy, what if Kennedy could grow up to be an adult and she could walk and talk and eat like me? And I said, Jacob, we don't know if that's going to happen. And he said, but Mommy, what if it did? Indeed. Hello, my name is Matt Chambers. Uh, my wife, Deb, and I are here from Minneapolis. Uh, we're the proud parents of Emerson Grace an energetic three-year-old with type 2. I can tell you that the day Emerson was born, that the day Emerson was born was the happiest day of our life. From early on, she was happy, a good eater, and had the energy and spunk of both of us combined. She made all of her early milestones that most doctors look for. She sat up by the age of six months. She was rolling. She could even get herself up into the crawling position ready to explore the space around her. Sorry. We found out she had SMA, the worst day of our lives. We watched the slow decline in her abilities. To see her struggle, doing the things that all of her peers do on a day-to-day -day basis, ravaged our lives. Only more so when she learned how to talk, and was able to ask, why can't I walk? Why can't I climb the stairs? Things such as her going up to the, the stairs in her wheelchair, wanting to drive up the stairs because she thinks she's walking. Those are the things we deal with. Nothing can prepare a parent for having to deal with this, having to make the decisions that we've had to make whether they're popular or not, we make these because we love our daughter and we want the best for her. We realize that this trial is, is 
targeting the younger type ones and we support that because we believe that is the way we can move this forward so that our children might have a chance at even maintaining what they have now if not for some type of reversal. So we appreciate your time today and really thank everybody here for listening to us. Hi, my name is Sarah. This is my daughter Stella. She was a healthy 9 pound 12 ounce baby girl and she did everything early. She was smiling, she was pulling at her toy bar, everything so early to indicate that she was quite advanced. And at one month of age, SMA just ravaged her. Hers was a very rapid decline. Um, I went to give her a bath, and all of a sudden her arms flailed. She couldn't hold her head up. And it was a very sudden thing for my Stella. We went to Mayo Clinic, and we were given the same thing that everybody is told. Take her home and love her. There's absolutely nothing you can do. And because she was the weakest case they had seen to date five and a half years ago, they said, um, you know, there's, there's just simply, there's simply nothing. And um, I, you know, had this been an opportunity for us, we would have absolutely latched on to it. We have very few options when we are dealing with absolute devastation. What, what more do you turn to? But what I can tell you is that we were willing to fight. We didn't know that at two months she would quit breathing in her car seat. We didn't know that we'd have episode after episode throughout her life. But she has been so worth it. She is such a blessing. At five and a half years old, she goes to school. She has a trach, she has a vent, she has a feeding tube, she has a cough assist, she has an IPV machine. It's round o'clock care. But I will also tell you that she thanks you. This morning before I hopped a plane from Iowa, I went in to turn her like I do every night. She was wide awake looking at her big, big brown eyes. And I said, honey, I am going to go. And I am going to go fight for your friends and for all the thousands of children that we represent here today that weren't as lucky as our children. And with the very little movement that she had, she raised her head and she blinked for yes. So I just want you to know that our children thank you. We thank you so much for having the hope for our children that, that we have for them. My name, is, my name is Cameron Gebert. This is my son, Charleston Gebert. Um, we live in Northern California currently. Um, I'd like to, first of all, in plain language, address the issue of con informed consent. I think uh, that the honor of being a parent is um, something that I myself hold especially sacred. And in that honor, every decision I make for my son, what we feed him, what television programs he watches, everything that we do for him directly affects his overall outcome as a potential adult someday. Every decision I make as a parent is with his best interest in mind. If I had just like the other parents, if I had the opportunity to say, you wouldn't have to have your son on a ventilator, you wouldn't have to have the, the, the emotional scars that every SMA family lives with, if I had the opportunity, I would have jumped on that bandwagon wholeheartedly. Ethically, I would not have allowed myself to have any sort of regret for doing the best thing that I could for my son, the best thing that was available. We all know, if you do nothing, what happens? It's confirmed, it's widely known. I'd like to thank the team and their efforts and all the nights of sleep that they lose for giving a family like me, like mine consent, or uh, excuse me, uh, giving us hope and a uh, potential uh, long-term life with our child. The clinical data is promising, obviously. And with your continued support as the guardians of the medicine which we receive and the opportunities for hope we receive, I hope you acknowledge each and every one of us. These kids are cognitively gifted. Their bodies fail them. Each one of us sitting here in this room has the benefit of being able to adjust ourselves when we're not comfortable or be able to swallow if we have too much saliva in our mouth. My son doesn't. Someday he may have that opportunity. Thank you for your time. I'm Rosemary Hilston, and, and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and this is our grandson. And as you can see, he's a big boy. He's 14 years old and in the eighth grade. Now, he has type 2. You saw on the graph, type 2 doesn't go down so fast, but they still go down. He never crawled. He never walked. 
he never sat without support. So he has been very disabled and uses much of the equipment that type 1 children do. Uh, he's in puberty now, and he likes girls, wants to have a girlfriend, loves cars, wants to learn to drive and get a Camaro, and lots of aspirations for a boy who cannot feed himself. So we've been 14 years. Alex was in the VPA trial that Dr. Kissel talked about. And we've been 14 years. We've seen so much come and go. This is promising. This is what we need for our future generation. My name is Kristen Bausch, and I'm representing my family with Kendra, my daughter. We're from Lancaster, Wisconsin, where we have two families in our community and two additional families within half an hour that have children as well with SMA. The birth of your child, everyone imagines what great joy it brings, but until you have that child and get to experience it, the immense joy that you have is indescribable. We've been able to see her develop milestones early on and later lose those milestones. Something that no parent should have to go through is the loss of those milestones where we bargain for their life. We ask God just one more day that they'll be able to take a breath. Last week, coming home from Thanksgiving um, family event, Kendra uses her pulse ox. We have all of the correct respiratory equipment that we take all of the protocols to stay proactive in her care. When we tried communicating with her, she wasn't responding, and it was dark in our vehicle. And when we turned the lights on, saw that she was blue. Her pulse ox was not going off. She was not breathing. She was not responding to us. The immense joy that you feel on your child's birth is the immense devastation I felt when I thought that we were losing her. This whole research has brought a lot of hope to our lives and we hope that it will go further so that we don't have to experience that fear of what if the day comes that we would have to say goodbye. I just want to thank the uh, uh, families and, and the 
and the caretakers are the children who have come to speak to us today, the gainers, the vultures, the swans, and the chambers. I think what you see in this room are people who share some of your pain and are trying to make the process so that we can uh, achieve improvements in this uh, deadly disease. You see a research team that has presented a, a, a wonderful preliminary data. And what you've seen in the last hour really are, is a process to try to perfect the protocol, uh, make sure the dose is right, make sure that the stopping rules aren't such that uh, we avoid seeing uh, effect when uh, there really is and, and that we miss an opportunity when, when uh, they, uh, they, uh, by a, a miss in the protocol because we do want the Fallons and the Emersons and the Graces to, to, to grow up and, and be normal children. So I thank you all for coming here and taking time from your children and, uh, and I think uh, we're going to now take a five minute break. We're going to then formulate the recommendations and hopefully these recommendations will help the investigators in putting together a, 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 a protocol that will go forward to make progress and we'll reconvene in about five minutes.